What you're going to see now is an apparition, uh, a religious experience. Uh, a few years ago, I came down, as I said, to talk, and this is, of course, the capital of Botox. So these are all photographs from maybe 10 years ago. And it shows, uh, this is also in keeping with your age recognition, the age-friendly airport. But what we were talking about that night, and it's really relevant to tonight, is the airport hadn't really set out to what it was going to be. It was going to be a big inbound airport for all these pilgrims traveling from all over the world to come to Knox Shrine, because that was Monsignor Horan's vision. And the vision of these guys as they prepared that 18,000 foot runway uh, was that we would have these pilgrimage flights. We've had a half dozen of them, I'd say. There's probably about one a year. And most of what's been happening has been this outbound. Um, so the vision of what Knock was going to be was quite different from when these people saw the port uh, of the opening day. Many believed it would never happen, but early this morning the first flights for Knock were on Dublin Airport's departure screens and a check-in desk was opened for passengers, mainly press and television crews, who would be on board the first jet aircraft to land in Knock. As thousands of spectators began to arrive at Connacht Regional Airport for what has been described as one of the greatest days in the history of the West of Ireland, the flight crew were making their final preparations. The weather in Knock was hazy, but visibility seemed to be improving all the time. In Dublin, Captain Bagnall would make his decision based on the latest weather report. And pressure 1030 disbelief. Okay, John, that's fine. We'll have an on time departure. An on time departure. The takeoff was on time, and as the St. Union flew west, the pilots made their first contact with Knock Airport. Visibility was still poor, but not bad enough to stop the landing. And just 25 minutes after leaving Dublin, the aircraft was lining up for its final approach. On the ground, the excitement increased as the aircraft was first heard and then seen flying in through the mist. This was the day the people of the West had been waiting for for years. No longer would not be a practice ground for drivers, and Monsignor Horan was the man of the day. They have the makings of a very fine... Uh, small airport here. Uh, many airports we operate to don't have facilities that they appear to be uh, providing here. I came because I have very many friends in Mayo and also last year I was involved in the choosing of the Mayo Man of the Year and you know who that was, Monsignor himself. I'm delighted to have been on the first flight to arrive in Knock. Did you ever think um, when you were growing up in Mayo that you would one day fly into an airport in Knock? Never. <laughs> Never for one moment. It's great. Well, as one of the signs here says, Monsignor Horan has got his wings at last. Behind me, the first passengers are being led out from Knock Airport on board the Boeing 737, the first aircraft to land in Connacht Regional Airport. The weather's improving, and hopefully, within about a half an hour or so, the first 707 will land again to take charter passengers out to Rome. 110 people travelled on the first 737 flight from Knock to Rome. As they made their way to the aircraft, the crowds outside the airport waved them off and wish them luck. None of them would swap their tickets for this plane anything. I'm going just... And this is flying to Dublin, and the notion, uh, the vision at the time was um, that we really were, we were hoping for uh, maybe two flights a week, and then to subsist on charter services. And that was interesting that uh, Monsignor Horan saw, had been to Lourdes, he saw planes coming in from around the world, and this was going to be an inbound airport. There was no real sense of the travel trade uh, being involved because they didn't need them. People were going to be uh, flying in to the new Fatima, the new Medjugorje, um, and coming to the shrine. And that really hasn't happened. But in a way, what has happened has been more interesting, and Knock is a more successful airport, uh, partly as a result of that. Reminds me of the papal visit. The numbers that would have been sustained from an inbound shrine would have been uh, something smaller than what um, Terry are getting at the moment, or even Derry are getting at the moment. So what Knock has achieved is quite interesting. And here we are, taking off in the mist and the fog, and uh, the round of applause. And 
there was an expectation that Aer Lingus would support it. Now, since then, we've had the transatlantic service. We had Fly Globespan came in. It was sort of the dream to get transatlantic. There's Shea Kenna, some of you will recognise him. We also had two uh, of the Democratic hopefuls, uh, Joe Biden and Michael Bloomberg, both came. Uh, so I know Christy Moore's song asked uh, how much uh, did NATO donate to the runway, but we could get Joe bombed if either of these guys looked like beating him at the presidential election. There's Michael Bloomberg there, no Dempsey, and we have um, what transatlantic point to point, pretty good idea with a low cost base. And even with the say, if you can just stop it, if there's a way of stopping the video just for me to talk a second, yeah, that's it. Um, it's re it has worked and it could work, but it's got an awful battering. And mainly the, uh, the points that we made about the delayed delivery of the, uh, the 737 MAX caused huge problems for Norwegian and has more or less shaken them off the routes that they were had, including Cork, Belfast and Shannon. But it's still there, and it's really important to point out that it's still there. The, the, the trouble that Globespan ran into, the club of trouble that Norwegian uh, ran into with opposition, and once three or four airlines are through that, we are now, you're now in a position where it could work, point to point, low cost, transatlantic, it's still in play, but it's not going to be in play for the next year or so, uh, for the reasons that I've just outlined. The big road to knock came with these guys, there's no doubt, we moved from being um, a peripheral airline, a per peripheral airport, to being a central airport in a four-year period, 2002 to 2006. And you can, um, we start there, and I just talk over what's happening here. And of course, some of the airlines we've had have come and gone. The nature of regional airports all over Europe is you scrap for these. And this is what I was talking about in 2009. And remember, the figures I was showing were quite impressive, but we had no idea what was going to happen. We were facing into a terrible recession. The figures are comparable with the late 50s in Dublin. That's an important point. And this is the, some of the other airports that we were up against at the time. What's been happening since? Very, very interesting. All of them have uh, fared differently. Exeter, Inverness, Ronald's Way, they would have been comparable with Knock. Have all grown. Kosice, Norwich have fallen back a bit. They're at lower levels than we expected. But uh, remember the target is 359,000 in Lourdes. That was what uh, Canon Horan wanted when he gave all those interviews. And that's half of what Knock is doing now. And look where Lourdes is now. Lourdes is stuck under 400,000. So this is why I say we're a, a pilgrimage air, airport. And look at what Cairns did from 300,000 to 3.5 million. Big question is, can Knock you know, move, uh, you can see I'm moved by, a th by the West Awake Thomas Davis song there uh, with my team and this presentation that I gave. Very obvious point, outbound makes inbound sustainable and these were the media characters that we were listening to in the run into that recession. Uh, how much did they, uh, the mood music of talking ourselves affect the travel industry, affect bu bu um, bookings? The point I was making is, if you're going to look for recovery, the West is a good place to start because inbound, uh, particularly with uh, German interest, this is a, my, my favourite slide of the night, the tiger takes a bath. But um, the, whereas the Celtic tiger faded away from us, what, uh, where were we going to look inbound and we we're going to look to mainland Europe? Supporting the supporters, uh, interesting, some of these characters are no longer in the industry. It's John Canaan and Sun were both gone. Tony Collins, astute, very, very astute, navigated his way towards that, through that. And who's this handsome young man? <laughs> and of course, Tanya and Jim Furlong uh, navigated their way through the recession successfully as well. Um, I talked about connectivity. Um, different approach to connectivity. That was something I predicted would happen. New hubs, the old hubs weren't going to work. Point to point was the future. Most of the growth that we've seen in European aviation is point to point, regional city to regional city, and the hubs have been parked. It's interesting because out of um, that, I, I departed very late that night to fly out to Miami for the launch of Oasis of the Seas, one of those huge cruise ships. Uh, long, uh, commissioned during the boom, uh, launched during the recession, and we remember the cruise rates that came in uh, in 2010, 2011, 2012. They were really, really, really cheap. It should have moved the Irish cruise industry from where you're looking into a higher level. I'm surprised it didn't than the levels that it did. But while we were there, 
these guys went out of business. I used a slide on the night to talk about late bookings, and these were going to be the kings of late bookings, but actually they didn't make it uh, three days after we had our talk in um, this in the, uh, the knockabout. Uh, they were gone. I talked about this was a sort of a happy, feel goody stuff. You know, companies are going to look to pick up um, their accounts, they're going to renegotiate. Uh, independent travel advices are going to become more important in the recession, less so than I expected, but it did become important. And then, um, it sort of, uh, there's Flan Clune, by the way, he just died two years ago in the white t shirt there, and that was the ITOF. You could see uh, nine members of the Irish Tour Operators Federation where in fact we now are down to three or four. That's the level of what's happened in tour operator. And I also spoke about relationships and transactions and building up uh, a relationship um, where if, if people need advice, do not think transactionally. That was stuff that used to happen during the boom and use the opportunity of competitors going out of business. Ryanair flouted that and they managed to double the size of the airline. Um, transactions are just gonna be fighting the internet and just always uh, think of that relationship ahead of transaction. That was sort of um, the sort of feel-good stuff that agents were being told at the time, that there is an opportunity out of the recession. But then um, what, what uh, opportunity, who took the opportunity is an interesting thing to look back on because this is uh, Paul Hackett doing his, doing his impression of Murray Bailey, <laughs> and these are the Blue Insurance guys. And what the, what did the Click and Go and Blue Insurance and Ryanair all use the recession to either, uh, both of two of those companies started during the recession, became hugely successful, and uh, Ryanair, as I say, doubled the size of the airline. So a recession is an opportunity. Was it an opportunity for Knock? Look at these numbers. 2002 up to 2006, big growth. You're like you're, you're sort of peripheral airport, and then we're holding our own right through everything. And I think that's a huge achievement by the Knock Airport team here. How did they do it? Um, look at what Cork did. They peaked around 2008 and slipped back to uh, just over half. Look at Shannon. They peaked a little earlier, 2007. They're just about half what they were doing. And look at Knock. 771,800 this year probably, and that is, they've held their own. And one of the big trends of the last few years is that now seven, nearly 70% of what of the traffic to and from the island are coming from Dublin. So one big airport, Dublin, with the motorway system beginning to take out two of our major regional airports, Cork and Shannon, but knock somehow. Maybe it's the road, maybe it's the loyalty of the customer base, Maybe it's the fact that they've got an interesting set of routes which are a little bit different and not going head to head with the one big airport in Dublin. One big airport isn't bad, by the way. A big uh, international airport that can sustain the number of North American destinations that Dublin has is good for tourism in Mayo as well as it is in Dublin. But what Knock has managed to do is not su uh, sustain the same level of damage that we've seen from Cork and Dublin. The major trend of 2020. A few weeks before I was talking in Knock, this woman was representing Sweden in the Eurovision with all those guys with the funny hats dancing around her. And her daughter has become the most recognisable face of 2019. Um, this has been noticed by the politicians. Ursula von Leyen is coming in. The European Commission mentioned tourism once. Um, we've had, we're supposed to have Ravana Plume as Transport Commissioner, we now have uh, um, Andrea uh, Valéan as Transport Commissioner. And we have Michael O'Leary getting agitated because all the move music, the big green vote in the European election, the, no vote, the Greta Thunberg movement, the flight shame movement, is putting aviation under pressure. And now we have Brexit as well. So two huge issues are beginning to haunt, not just aviation, but our future as a tourist destination. Technology, this is the first of the Aer Lingus A321LO, it's just after it arrived in Dublin, it's taking off uh, on a London run. But the key to that, the 321 lo is its reach. It can go to the west coast in the United States. Good for regional airports, it means that we're now selling 180 transatlantic seats where we always had to sell 280 before for an A330. This was, 
Uh, it looks like a solution. The problem is it's not being delivered fast enough. Aer Lingus have four and they need four more to actually start expanding again. The Montreal route was supposed to start this, it's been put back to 2020, it's now being put back to 2021. And in an environment where the 737 MAX, which also has a stupendous reach, a tremendous reach, is grounded, it means that every single airline, including the ones that we are behoven to here, uh, in which are mainly Ryanair, uh, have had to look at their growth plans and stall them. Now it's not permanent, but it means that if we're going to have a year of very, very slow growth and maybe zero growth, we already, the figures for uh, winter aviation uh, are down by 4%. We don't know what's going to happen this summer yet, they're putting the schedules together. This should have been the solution. 100 seats, the Sukhoi Superjet, but it ran into all sorts of problems, not least being the sanctions uh, that Mr. Bush, uh, that, uh, that Mr. Trump um, um, imposed on Russia. Um, the spare part situation got really bad. Uh, CityJet lost the contracts they had with their Sukhois and eventually sent them back. 100 seats is ideal. It's absolutely ideal. The real problem is we don't have enough aircraft in that 100 seat um, sector to sustain the demand out of regional airports. And if that changes, everything changes for airports like not. Uh, Pat Byrne uh, pays great stock in this and it really, now what are Tourism Ireland saying? Look at this, 0% uh, growth from Europe, minus one from uh, Britain. They are worried that all the targets that they were, you know, that sort of cautious, gentle growth of 3 4%, it's going to, it's, um, it, it's coming to a halt. One of the big ideas that came out of it, by the way, is that areas, regions of Ireland, are going to be twinned with major outbound markets. And as you can see, they've twinned Mayo with Germany, which is really good news uh, because it's the second biggest outbound in the world after China. But it also is installing. It's stalling as a market, as an outbound market, 0%, where we expected 4 or 5%. This is the TV ad, specifically designed, by the way, to bring uh, tourists to the northern half of the Wild Atlantic Way. 80% of our tourists south of Galway, 20% north of Galway. And the uh, goal of the very first Fill Your Heart with Ireland advertising campaign was designed to f fill out uh, Galway, Mayo, Sligo, Donegal with, um, the, the, um, with the, uh, uh, a higher proportion of that. That will be running over the next uh, 12 months. So that's going to be part of the, uh, hopefully boosting the inbound profile, if not back to where we were, um, an inbound seasonal airport bringing people in for summer. After that, um, while well, the video finished up there, with a little close up of the grave of the man that came up with this idea in the first place. Callan Horan isn't around anymore, he's safely under about uh, three and a half ton of granite but uh, while he mightn't have called it right that this is going to be a big pilgrimage airport with people flying in from all over the world to say their prayers he actually was very very good at marketing he marketed something an idea that really uh, nobody else uh, could have got over the line nobody else could have succeeded in achieving and uh, that sort of innovation and that sort of um, vision and that sort of more marketing savvy is most of all what will ensure the survival of regional airports and the survival of NOC. I think what when, when we count up the numbers for 2019, I think everybody involved with the airport can be very, very proud when we see if what's happening all around us. But the buffeting, the um, winds we are facing from the environmental movement, we already have aviation taxes in Sweden, um, which contributed to the uh, base closures that Ryanair announced today. We have them in the Netherlands and Belgium. We have them coming in France, and there's a very strong suspicion that they're coming in German and Germany. And as I say, Ursula von der Leyen's commission is not going to be aviation friendly, from what we know about it. So uh, we're facing uncertain times. And the last time I came here, we were facing uncertain times. We came through it. Uh, reasonably intact and hopefully
the same would be true again. Thank you very much for your attention. I've come between you and your, your uh, dinner. Thank you.